Welcome to State of Mind. I'm Krishna C. Nadella. Today, we're coming to you from the National Press Club Broadcast Center in Washington, D.C. It's an apt location to focus on how to pitch yourself, especially for a job interview. That, combined with rounding the bases to baseball season, sparked today's topic, how to be a major league pitcher. I'm delighted to introduce my guest, two-time Emmy and Peabody Award winner, Heidi Berenson. Her extensive background includes ABC News, Good Morning America, CBS News, and CNN. She's president of Berenson Communications, based here in Washington, D.C. Heidi coaches clients from Fortune 500 executives to members of Congress to power up their performances. I'm pleased to note Heidi and I have worked together, so I can attest her coaching works. So let's kick off by asking, Heidi, when pitching yourself in a job interview, what should you know before you go? Well, Krishna, I like to think of it as you can either check the headlines or do a tweet. What's your headline or tweet? So my headline or tweet is this. First, you only have one chance to make a first impression. And second, what's the image you want to project? So I like to think of it in terms of a first date. You know, are you swiping, swiping right or are you swiping left? Right. And what's the impression when you first see the date, when you sit down, you're like, is this a person I want to spend the rest of my life with or the next 10 minutes with? Exactly. And so you want to think of it, that's the same dynamic that's going on with an interviewer. So think about it this way. You only have about nine seconds to make a first impression. So rather than sort of working up to what you said, wind up or pitch, think about don't do the wind up, just pitch. Just right. come in, this is why I should be working for you. So think about it in terms of that. The next piece is think about what is the company that you're going after. So what's the image you want to project? So is it a tech company? Is it education? Is it a nonprofit? Is it media, you know, like I'm in? Is it, is it legal or, or corporate? And what you want to do is think about what you want to wear so that first impression really works. So see what their culture is and then take it up a notch. Okay. So is it a, you know, hoodie culture, but maybe you should come in and, you know, like a, just a jacket, like a leather jacket and right. a shirt, not necessarily a hoodie, but just, you know, one, one piece up. Another piece is do your homework okay. on the company. Like what should you, what should you know about them so that when you walk in, you'll be able to ask them questions or sort of know what you're dealing with. And another piece is I like to think about however you are getting ready for this, like you, you do have that first impression of the image you want to project, it actually does work. So like when I was at Good Morning America, I remember when I was first in the job, I would wear a jacket or a blazer, and I noticed people were always coming up to me saying, do you know where this is? And you know, always asking me these questions, like why are they asking me? I'm just starting out. But because of a jacket or blazer, it seems like, whoa, I knew what I was talking about. So it really does work. So that actually reminds me of an encounter I experienced at my day job at Bloomberg. It was the last week of the year, so it was really slow, so most people were dressing casually. But to your point, my father always said, wear a suit and tie to work. You never know who you're going to meet. Exactly. And sure enough, guess who I bump into? Michael Bloomberg. We have a small conversation, <laughs> yeah. but funny enough, as we're parting ways, he says to me, love your tie. Right. So that's fabulous. So he noticed, and, and, and talk about an employer. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing is, they say dress for the dress for the job you want, not the job you have. So again, that's, that's bringing it up a notch. So yeah. we have a question submitted from one of our college students at St. John's University. This is Tiffany. Let's take a look. Sure. Hi, my name is Tiffany Harabi, and I go to St. John's University. My question is, what can I do to stand out from a pool of applicants? Tiffany, that's an excellent question. So first off, you want to think about this. These are two really great concepts. People buy based on how they feel, like feel about you, mm -hmm. than on what they see or hear. So you want to establish some kind of connection. So one way to do that is, is research has shown that people think in metaphors and they learn through anecdotes. So you want to come armed if you can. So you know how we called this show Major League Pitching. Right. And you just told the Bloomberg story and I told the Good Morning America story. So if you want to make the point that, let's say you're very organized, instead of just saying, well, I'm really organized or I'm a people person or I can solve problems, you come and say, you know what? I walked into a situation, into an office that was a complete mess. I took it on my own, you know, I used my own money, my own initiative. I went to one of the stores and I bought new file folders that were color coded and boxes and I came in and I color coded everything. So that's sort of what I did to show that I was organized. If, if it was a challenge, did you call and give someone the wrong, you know, sort of, oh my gosh, I gave them the wrong information or the wrong directions. What kind of problem did you deal with 
what, what did you face and how did you resolve it? So, th so that's another way. Another thing is if you think about it in terms of what would help you to have them say, wow, I want that person. So you right. want to say what's in it for them. So you want to come armed with, I've done research on the company and this is where I could help you. So those are, those are, I think, Tiffany, those would be some really good, you know, points to come up with. That's very helpful. Yeah. Our next question is from Tim, who's also a St. John student. Great. Hi, my name's Tim. I'm from St. John's University. The question that I had today is, some cultures or households place more emphasis on humility, resulting in some individuals to less pronounce their accomplishments. What do you think is the right balance between confidence and humility, and how can you pitch yourself as valuable and deserving of a promotion without coming across as too assertive? Thank you. Well, I got to tell you. Hi, my name's Tim. Tim, I'm from you're Sin really on. You're really on because to just have that awareness about the culture. So we have a slide that I just wanted to pull up that's sort of about audience reaction. And the audience responds to you really on three levels. They respond to you on your body language, right. your voice, and your choice of words. So y if you go in, there's something called humble brag. Okay, what Did, is humble brag? Okay, humble brag is where you say, oh, my child just got into Harvard. Oh, it was worth all that time schlepping them to and from the library. Okay. It's sort of like saying something good and then, you know, y then you like, you get all humble about it. You know what? Again, if you make it about them, I just invented such and such. I think that could really be helpful for your company. So I bring, I just won a prize for, like I say, the Emmy Awards. Right. When I go in for people, I say, you know what? I've won these two Emmy Awards, and I'm very proud that I can bring all that experience to work for your company. You know, and, and you so it establishes it the credibility, but it doesn't show the pompousness of trying Exactly. To. So looking at the body language slide, so more than half your message is you. So we talked about what you should wear and that you should feel good in it. But it's also your body language. It's also making sure you have good eye contact. It's making sure you have great energy. Do you say, I'm really excited to be here, or I'm really excited to be here. There's, right. a, there's a huge difference. So that's part of body language, and that actually goes into voice. Okay. So I, I use, now watch the ums and ahs. You're saying, I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm really good at what I do. Um, let me tell you what I do, that's great. Um, that's gonna erode your credibility as the expert. So all you have to do is have that awareness, like just listen for it, like, like Tim just had the awareness of the culture. Have the awareness just in regular life of listening for ums and ahs, and just insert a pause. Just pause instead, that would be great. And then finally, your choice of words. And Tim, this is where it's really gonna be crucial. I like to think of it as a sandwich. The first layer is sort of saying what you wanna, what you're proud of. The second is where it can apply to them. And the third is what you could then do with that or what you do with that experience. So you sort of think about it as the sandwich approach. So the other piece is you want to, you know, coming off this and, and then staying on word choice, is you want to be sure that you come up with the wows. What are the wows about you? And this also played to Tiffany, how you, how you d distinguish yourself from the competitions. Wow, I didn't know you traveled around the world by yourself and you were, you know, in the tsunami or something. I mean, so that, that's one piece. Another one is, the acronym WIFM, W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for me? So you would be thinking if you're interviewing me, what's in it for me, Heidi, to hire Absolutely. you? So you want to answer that question. You could even say, so I'm wondering, I, I bet you're wondering, what's in it for us to hire you? Let me tell you. So you've got the wows, you've got WIFM, you've got that people buy based on how they feel about you. So if you, maybe you look at something in their office and you say, wow, I didn't realize you were a bowler. I am too. I just see you have that bowling trophy. That's great. If you talk to them on a conversational level, it immediately crea creates a connection. Or if you say, did you just see the latest movie? You know, what did you think of the latest Star Wars movie? I see you have a Star Wars poster in here. Yeah, so that could be great. And another piece is, if, if you think about in terms of, like when I say what you could bring to the table, when I interviewed for Good Morning America, I thought, what can I bring that would show them that I've watched the show and I know all about it? So I brought, actual story ideas. I said, you know, I said, uh, you know, the Sweet 16 is coming up, Valentine's Day is coming up, uh, on Labor Day we can do this, and I had story ideas. Well, do you know that now, for all the morning talk shows, Good Morning America, Today, CBS, they all require anyone who's coming in for the show, they all have to bring in story ideas. Yeah, right. Now, I'm not necessarily saying it came from me, but I was very proud of the fact that I thought of those ideas Absolutely. and brought them on my own. So that's what you want to do is do your homework, think what can you bring to them. That's wonderful. Our final question is from Jess, a student at Penn State University. Oh, great.
What are some of the best responses that you've heard when you ask the question, why should I hire you? Oh, that's fantastic. All right, so we have something that we call make it fresh, make it fast, make it fit, and where possible, make it fun. Okay. How can you pitch yourself in a new way? So if you want to say something like, well, I don't know if you've seen this show, Top Chef, but I feel like I bring the right ingredients with me or the right recipe for success. Let me tell you what that is. So you can also say, I'm sure you're interviewing a, a whole group of people, but here's what I can do. So if you come with those examples and you do what I call you know, we, we said major league pitching. Right. So I'm from Boston, and of course the Red Sox, I know you're up in New York, <laughs> I, I, I'm just, but we're all, I, I won't say anything. We're all kumbaya about this, <laughs> but anyway, but having grown up in Boston and going to Fenway Park, I used to look at the pitchers on the pitcher's mound, you know, when you're sitting, and you're so right. close, you know, not watching on TV, but actually in the park, and I would say, why are they doing this whole long wind up? Why don't they just pitch? Right. What's well, the same thing here? A wind up would be, well, you know, let me sort of think about why I'm really good. It just want to be, you know what? I have three key points. Because people think the best in threes, that's the number that we can hold in our head the best and they can hold in their head the best. So if you say I have three key points, number one, my communication skills, number two, my organizational skills, but number three, because I've traveled and I see in this job there's a lot of travel, culturally, so that would be sort of my three C, culturally, I'm I'm keyed in to you know sort of how you deal around the world so I would really just come in saying what is the culture here what do I bring to the table but more importantly what are the stories or the anecdotes or the examples that I have that will really make it you know move the needle forward that's great so yeah. just to recap you're the yeah. coach I want to hit a home run yeah What's the playbook, Heidi? Okay, so let's go ahead. We, we've got on the screen right now, we call it eight plus don't be late. So I, it, it's really that old adage, be early to be on time. I always thought if you were on time, you were doing well. What? You, what you, well, I'm so, seeing so, that so, look in your so, eye. So coming from New York, yes. uh, the old adage from Tom Coughlin, two-time Super Bowl winning champ for the uh, New York Giants, if you're five minutes early, you're late. Exactly, exactly. And like I used to, I used to time it right to the money, but you know what? We first of all, I learned something very interesting. If you look at how people sort of behave, some are always punctual, some are right on time, and some you just know are always late. We have friends and, and professional colleagues. We say the late, you know, right. Jane, the late Jim, you know, etc. So to that point, you know, and in this day and age of everybody on their phones and traffic being all, you know, you don't know when, if you're taking the metro, you don't know when it's going to break down. Right. So you have to plan for those eventualities. And actually, that is a great sort of life lesson. You don't know what's going to happen. That's so so plan just in case. So I like to say not just double the time, but triple the time. If it normally takes you 15 minutes, get there, leave 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. What if you want to get there and it's a day in the summer and you're hot and you're sweating? Don't right. you want to go to the restroom, powder your nose, so right. to speak, you know, and make sure you're okay. But just, so I'm, I think we made that point to everybody. So that's good. So it's the eight plus don't be late to be early, be on time. So the first is a wow factor. What is it that you could say that they say, wow, I didn't know that about you, or wow, I didn't know that about the industry? That's really interesting. Then I would go not just to say what the wow factor is, but what is the example behind it? Right. Okay, what can you tell them? That's the differentiator between you and the rest of the competition. Exactly. So that'll help with Jess and, and Tiffany. Exactly. We, we talked about WIFM, mm -hmm. what's in it for me. But I really, you know, if you think about it, that WIFM is the radio station everybody wants to be tuned to. Right, that's a great analogy. And, and, and I remember Oprah once said, it, the, over her 25 years of doing the talk show, she said whether you were a celebrity, a sports star, a professor, you know, just a, a student, everybody wanted the same thing. Do you see me? Do you hear me? Do I matter? And that's what, so even the person who's interviewing you, if you say, gosh, and actually it's funny that Bloomberg said that because I'm looking at your tie and I'm thinking that tie is stunning and your suit it's is It's the stunning. same tie. It is the same tie? It is, it is. Oh my gosh, <laughs> no seriously, I'm looking at that tie saying that is a stunning tie. Thank you. So anyway, so that actually, so then that, see how you just like, you sparked and you just right. lit up from that. So you want to be sincere about it. You want to not want to be disingenuous. You want to be, you know, really like genuine about it and authentic. Right. So the next piece is doing your homework. So I like to say, in this day and age, you do your homework on a lot of levels. Everyone's on LinkedIn, everybody's on social media, you can Google anybody. I know a situation where uh, we worked with some lawyers and they were pitching new business. In fact, in the, in the legal industry, 
they, you know, it, and sort of the whole law firm genre, it's the beauty pageant, they call it, the beauty contest or the beauty pageant. Because when you go up to pitch new business, which is just like pitching yourself, right. you are pitching against other law firms. So it's one right after the other, just like when you're in a, a beauty pageant. Right. So in this particular case, if you look and do your homework and so you find out about the person who's interviewing you, you maybe go and you and you do like Glassdoor, Indeed, like right. you, you do your homework. Mm -hmm. What are they saying internally? There's yeah. a lot of transparent, you know, websites that see about transparency. So you want to really do your homework on a whole lot of levels. Right. And also the person who's interviewing you. Now, you don't want to get creepy and get weird <laughs> like you're the CIA. Right. And, well, I saw that you and your child, you know, but you right. want to do it from a 35,000 foot level, you know, and, and sort of see if you can weave it into the conversation. Absolutely. The next piece is you want to prep questions for them. Mm -hmm. So this is really interesting. There's a gift that at the end that they often say, well, is there anything you want to ask us? Right. Is there anything that, All you know, the that time. we should, right. And you want to be ready for that. So that's number one. Number two is you want to say, gee, I'd like to ask you, what is this, you know, I read about such and such. Is this such and such? And you want to ask them questions so they need to be ready. Okay. So the next piece is I think if you do something in terms of on your, if you do anecdotes or your homework, actually, can, I was just going to say, you want to, once you've done all these things, you want to practice out loud. And then, yeah, so we're, we're good on this. So you want to practice out loud with a friend or, you know, on your so phone. So role playing. Yeah, yeah. Really? Exactly, okay. exactly. And you want to be thinking about, so I would set up, and actually I have my iPad here. So I would sort of set up my iPad or, or your, you know, whatever your device is, mm -hmm. and I would set it up, and I would actually ask myself the question, and then I would play it back, or I would say, you know, do it with a friend and say, can you ask me a question? I would go ahead and... It's kind of like when athletes watch game tape and they critique exactly. themselves. Exactly. Exactly. So I would look, and then you could look back and you could say, gee, I noticed my head was tilted, or gee, I noticed I said um, or gee, I noticed that, you know. So that way, when you look at the device and you have instant feedback, right. or you do it in a mirror, you know, or I sometimes at 35,000 feet on a plane, so I, I would just sort of look in and just say, oh my gosh. <laughs> so the other piece is, I would really think, again with the phone, how, if I were going to tweet this, like what would my message be? If I want to leave them with only one message. Right what would that be? And then that way I would, and so you may want to write it and run it by a friend. Right. Or, or write it, sleep on it, look at it the next day. It's just like if, you know, if I pick up my phone and I say, gee, what are the headlines from today? Oh, I'm seeing the New York Times. Wow, this says, you know, so just like a headline, you kind of know the rest of the story. Okay. That way, you know, it, it'll help. It'll really help. So if, if, think tweet, think headline, Practice out loud. Your ears need to hear your mouth saying the words. Right. And another thing that you and I have done a lot is breathing. Yes. So I realize I have a lot of energy and I speak quickly. So sometimes I have to be aware, Heidi, slow down or pause. But the good news is I now hear that I don't say um anymore. Right. Or, or if I do, let's say I used to say 10 ums and I brought it down to two. Here's the bottom line. Krishna, it's about progress, not perfection. I love that. And every, and, and every interview you do, even if you don't get the interview, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, you don't get the job, think, wow, I just got some good information. I had some good practice. What did I do well? What can I pat myself on the back for? I love that, especially for our audience of college yeah. students. Yep. I think they go into interviews trying to be perfect. Right. And that sometimes is the worst approach of all. Right, right. So someone once said to me, don't let perfection get in the way of progress. Oh, that's great. So did you do well? Did you do fewer ums? You know, how did that work out for you? Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Heidi, this has been a great introduction. If people would like to learn more, how can they get in touch with you? Well, you can, you can go to... <laughs> You can go to berensoncom.com. You can go to at berensoncom on any of the platforms, any of the social media platforms. We would love to help folks. And yeah, I, I mean, I think it's great. Just the, the more you sort of add to your toolbox and you have all these different tools, the verbal, the nonverbal tools, and you practice out loud, you're going to be good to go. Well, I can yeah. tell you personally, I've experienced a lot and learned a lot from you, so I'm a big fan. Yay. Well, look, thank you so much for your time today, and thank you so much for joining us on State of Mind. I, I couldn't be happier. This was great. And oh. I would just leave them with everything is meant to be. Whatever job you are supposed to be in, you will be in the right job. It will, the job will find you. Do everything you can, line it all up, but the, the job will absolutely work for you. It will find it. you. I yeah. love it. Yeah. On that note, that will wrap up our show for today. If you like what you saw in today's episode, please like share, comment, 
and subscribe on the following social media platforms at the end of the episode. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. And remember, every life is a book. Make yours a bestseller. Have a good night.